joining us for Hope today because we love spending these next 30 minutes with you. And before we started, you should have saw Tom was dancing. He was, I was doing some Gangnam style. I was here. like, oh <laughs> man, oh man. Happy Friday. Amanda, what do we have going oh, on my the show today? <laughs> well, let me tell you, we don't struggle with happiness or joy around here. I mean, some are not happy because the Steelers lost last night. Hey, hey, hey let's, let's some, stay on the happy side here. <laughs> some of us are happy because we went to bed and got good sleep last night. But today our guest is here to tell us to stop chasing happy. What? Uh, well, he's all about joy and contentment, which is the lasting thing as you know, it doesn't depend on the Steelers or That's sleep. True. So we're going to have a really good conversation talking all about how you can find joy and lasting contentment. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. But it's not based on the Steelers. You know, I get disappointed if they lose. But, you know, it is uh, it is great that our happiness is based on something else. I'll tell you what else makes me happy, guys. Christmas cards. Christmas mm -hmm. cards make me happy. I love Christmas cards. We hang them up in the office all over. And this is a, from a viewer and uh, named Christina. And she just says very simply, Merry Christmas, Sydney Goldman and Tom Hollis. Keep Jesus in Christmas. Aww. Praise the Lord. That's Aww. great. Uh, that. Hey, we'll take, you know, you want to send your Christmas cards? Want to send snacks, snacks, treats, Christmas, whatever you want to send. We'll send celebrate spinach, Christmas you know. here. Spinach, kale. <laughs> so excited. But yeah, we're just so grateful for all of you. It's such a joy that we have the honor and the privilege to come into your homes or wherever you're watching from every single day. That brings us so much contentment and happiness, right, Tom? That's right. And we have a verse along those lines. You have heard this one before. Philippians 4.4, 4, it says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And guys, I think about the way Paul writes. Towards the end of his letters, he's always giving them like, almost like checklists of things. Don't forget this, don't forget this. Pray, pray without ceasing, you know, different things like that. This is one of the most fun ones, to rejoice in the Lord always, Anna. And yes. to, to, you know, even when the Steelers lose, even when everything, something that might not be going the way you, you want it to, rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah, but what's so interesting is Paul wrote this when he was in prison. Like he yeah, was in chains. And so this directive to us really is not about, hey, when everything's going great in your life, rejoice. Like it's easy to rejoice when things are good. But this is talking about something so much deeper that no matter what we're experiencing, we can rejoice because God is sovereign. He is on the throne. He promises to make all things work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. We can rejoice because we are chosen by him, because we are loved by him, because he has put a purpose in us. Like truly the things that we can rejoice over are endless. We don't have to look around at what's going on because there are things that are a firm foundation because we are children of God and for that we can rejoice. You know, just even hearing that verse reminds me of a song that I used to sing at church. So I'm going to do a little song, but it was like, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, again, I say <laughs> rejoice. Yay! And I just want to encourage you sometimes you have to sing a little song. You have to lift your spirits up. I know there's been many times in my life, the good and the bad, I'll just start singing to Jesus or I just encourage you, have a little dance party in your bedroom or in your living room. Like sometimes you just got to sing out loud and no matter mm -hmm. what the circumstances, because I know praise, that's a way of breakthrough. When we lift up our praises to God, when we thank him for all the things that he's done, let's just even right now, you just think about all he's done through 2021. Whew, we've mm. came a mighty, mighty long way, but we're still here. We're still standing and it's all because of our God. He's given us peace, even in the midst of the storms. Those are so many things that I like to, you know, just think on and meditate even in the morning, like before I even wake up, I'll just lay in my bed. My cats are over here. My husband's right here. And I'll just start thanking God for everything because that brings me so much joy. Yeah, <laughs> I think thankfulness uh, is such a key to that. I love that. And I love the fact that uh, when you when you know that you're called of God, that you're in His in His plan and purposes, there's a peace that goes with that. That that's sort of like the foundation of that joy. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Well, in today's society, happiness is often pursued as the ultimate goal in life. And although many are chasing after it, much of the population still describes themselves as being unhappy. Our guest today, Phil Waldrop, says, stop chasing happy. 
He joins us to talk about what we can chase after instead to find true joy and contentment in this one life that God has given us. So Phil, welcome to Hope Today. Well, thank you, Anna. And, um, I'm happy because the University of Alabama won this last weekend, even if the Steelers didn't. At least some of <laughs> my happiness this weekend. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, Phil. Help a brother oh out here, Phil. Uh, well, we're glad that your team won, and I'm glad that I slept well last night. So, uh, so Phil, tell us, why did you write a book called Stop Chasing Happy? Like, what's, what's wrong with happiness? Well, there's nothing wrong with happiness in itself. The problem is that as I traveled around the country, I met people all the time who were unhappy. And every one of them seemed to say to me, I just want to be happy. And I kept asking them, well, what would make you happy? And, and I found people would always say something like this to me. Well, I would be happy if, and then they filled in the blank. You know, I heard people say, well, I'd be happy if I had more money. I'd be happy if I had a different job. I'd be healthy, you know, happy if I was healthy. Uh, I even had one lady say, I'd be happy if I had a different family. And everybody had an if. And then I found some people who, well, quite frankly, they, they had the blank filled in and they still weren't happy. And I realized the people in my life that truly were happy, that had found joy and loved living every day were people who weren't really trying to be happy. It was the byproduct of them finding what God wanted them to do and they were doing it. And that brought them joy and the people who were seeking happiness never found it, but the people who were doing what God called them and made them to do, they found happiness. Yeah, so it's interesting you talk about this idea of that our joy, our that lasting happiness is connected to our purpose, what God designed us to do. Can you talk a little bit about purpose and how do we even go about finding purpose? Well, I think the whole plan of God was when he made us, you know, the scripture is very clear that even before we were born, that God made us and formed us in the womb of our mother. And when God put us together, you know, now we call it DNA. But in reality, I think when God put the DNA together, he knew what he wanted us to do in life. And so most of us, the devil's always trying to tell us, well, if you will do something else except what God wants you to do, you're going to be happy. That's what he told Adam and Eve, and he's been telling everybody that ever since. But when we find our purpose, which is finding exactly what God wants us to do, we understand the overall mission is to glorify God, but then what is our role in doing that? Now, a great analogy, in fact, Tom kind of introduced it here, bringing up the Steelers, is I use the, use the picture of a football team. Think about a football team. There's the quarterback, there's the linebackers, there's the wide receivers, but there's also the coaches and there's the people on the sideline who, you know, maybe are helping with the medical things, but there's also cheerleaders and there's also fans. Now, all of those people have the same mission. They all want to win the football game, but everybody has a different role. What the quarterback does is different from what the linebacker does, and that's different from what the coaches does, even from what the fans do. Everybody wants to win, but everybody has a different role on the team. And when I use the word purpose, I mean we find what role God wants for us. Because the devil keeps trying to tell the quarterback, well, you need to be a linebacker. And the linebacker is thinking, well, I really need to be the coach. And the coach is thinking, you know, I really need to be a fan, especially when they're losing. So everybody has that analogy. And in the Christian life, when we understand that our mission in life is to glorify God, but then God has a special place for us on his team. And when we find what that place is, that is our purpose. And it's not that hard to find, but when we find it, we got to be willing to do it. That's really good, Phil, except that you're causing me pain just to think about all that. But uh, no, the, the, just the, the whole idea of that role and being on the team, what, what moves us away from that? What, what kind of forces work upon us that, that uh, you know, kind of push us out of, of where we can function and, and, and fulfill that role that God has for us? Well, one of the things I think we do is we look at other people and we look at someone else's family and think, boy, if I had their family or if I had their money or if I had their talents, you know, I, I'm not a singer. I can't sing at all. So it's very easy for me to look at people who can sing and think, boy, I'd be happy if I could sing like that person. 
But what happens is the devil knows that once we find our purpose, what God created us to do, and we do it, when we do that, then all of a sudden, guess what? We're going to find the contentment and the joy and the happiness like Paul talked about in Philippians. And when we find it, we never want to go back to the devil's way. So the devil does everything he can to keep you from doing that purpose. And by the way, we sometimes think of a purpose as something that's real profound, you know, preaching or singing in front of a great crowd. That's not necessarily true. I met a lady who helped me understand one of the happiest women I ever met was this lady, a very common lady. And she said to me, she said, I want to tell you, I'm just filled with the joy of the Lord. And I said, that's wonderful. She said, because I found what God created me to do and I've been doing it and it gives me great joy. So I had to say, well, what is it that God created you to do? And I was expecting her to tell me about some ministry she led or something profound. And with a big smile on her face, she said, God put me in this world to care for my mentally challenged brother. And she said, you know, I work a job and we go to church and we love all of that but my joy comes from caring for my mentally challenged brother. And I just looked at her and I, at that moment, it kind of startled me, but I realized she did. See, we would look and say, well, that's no fun to take care of a mentally challenged brother. And for those people who do that, they have a special place in my heart. But that lady discovered that was her purpose. And when she did it, the joy came in her life. So it's nothing profound. It doesn't have to be in front of the people. It doesn't have to be nationally known. It can be just a one person in your life, in your family. And when you're fulfilling that purpose, you're gonna find joy. I love this conversation we're just having about purpose and finding the joy that only Jesus can give. And I'm just curious to hear a little bit about your story, Phil, about how did you discover your purpose and walk on that path and being on the right position on God's team? Well, I was blessed to grow up in a wonderful Christian home. I had a mom and dad who loved Jesus and church was a very active part of our life. But when I was a young person, when I was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, I had one ambition. I was gonna go to Auburn University in Alabama and become a veterinarian. I loved animals. I, I didn't wanna be a small animal veterinarian. I wanted to be a big animal veterinarian. We had cows and I thought, wow, I'd like to doctor cows the rest of my life. But even though I loved being around those animals at our, at our little farm, that did not bring joy in my life. And I can remember, even though I had been on the radio as a young man and it worked at what we then called disc jockeys, now they call it on air talent. I had done all of those things. I chased all of those things and I'm still a teenager. And then I realized, God, what do you want me to do? And that's when I realized God had called me to proclaim his word and to speak into the lives of people. And now for 45 years, God has given me that privilege of writing and speaking and sharing with people and the joy that it brings into my life. Not because I'm great at those things, but it brings joy in my life because I know it's what God wants me to do. And every day I get up, sure, there's days I get sick like everybody else and I have bad days and things aren't going well. But every day I get to go to bed at night saying, Lord, today I did what you wanted me to do. And that brings a contentment and a joy that gets me through a lot of those hard days and a lot of the problems that we face because I can see through the problem to the purpose God has for me. Mm -hmm. So Phil, as you are walking out your purpose and you have that joy, are there certain things that you intentionally put in place in your life to help you stay encouraged, to help keep you going even on the hard days? Oh, absolutely. I think most of us try to hinge our joy on the approval or the applause of other people. Sometimes we do need encouragement from people, but we think, well, somebody needs to tell me today how wonderful I am, or after I did something, I need to receive an award, applause for it. And what I discovered is I, I don't have to live seeking the approval of people because the crowd that will applaud you one day will boo you the next day. Uh, ask any football coach that, and they'll tell you that. Even our Lord one day was coming into Jerusalem and there was people gathering and they were, they were laying down palm branches and hollering Hosanna. And yet three days later, he was being crucified in that city. So the truth is we don't really seek after the applaud. I tell people when you can seek only the approval of a holy God and say at the end of the day, Lord, did I do what you tell me to do? your heart will be encouraged. 
And even when you have hard days, you'll be encouraged. Think for a moment uh, about the Apostle Paul. I reference quite a bit in my book, Stop Chasing Happy. I reference uh, the book of Philippians, which we think of as the joy book of the Bible. In fact, a moment ago, the verse for the day came from there about rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Well, Paul didn't say just rejoice regardless what happened. He said rejoice in the Lord. In other words, know God's mission and God's purpose, and you do that and you rejoice. Here's what I discovered. You know, when Paul was writing Philippians, he starts that book by telling them why he was in prison. Interesting, the man who wrote the book on joy in the Bible wrote it from prison. And I began to wonder why would he do that? And then I, remind, I was reminded that when Paul first went to Philippi, he was put in jail and while in jail, God sent an earthquake and it set him free. And now those Christians were wondering, Paul, why isn't God sending an earthquake to get you free? And Paul said, it's because about the mission. God sent the earthquake the first time so I could share the gospel and establish a church in Philippi. And now he's still fulfilling that same mission because even though I'm in prison, I'm sharing the gospel with the guards who are coming to know the Lord. And some of them were even people who worked in Caesar's household. So Paul could see through the pain to the purpose. And when you can do that, every day can be a day filled with joy. Well, that, that is really good. I, I think of Paul, uh, I think of the guards. Every time they changed guards, a new one got to hear the gospel. And uh, I, I love that. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more with Phil about Stop Chasing Happy. We'll be right back. If you gave to Cornerstone Television in 2021, thank you. Your impact was life-changing. Because of you, the good news was broadcast every day to countless households. People gave their hearts to Jesus. Others were healed and delivered and grew closer to God. And our prayer partners prayed on 76,000 calls through the prayer line that you helped make available 24 seven. There's not enough time to mention all that God did, but know this, the impact of your giving was dramatic. Would you prayerfully consider giving an end of year gift to help Cornerstone Television finish the year strong? We can't do this God-ordained ministry without you. When you give, we'll send you our 2022 Cornerstone Cares calendar. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your giving and Merry Christmas. We are talking with Phil Waldrop today who wrote a book with a fascinating title, Stop Chasing Happy. And Phil, right before the break, you were talking about how uh, Paul wrote the book of Philippians, the book known as the book of joy. And he was in prison. He was going through a terrible time. And I'm just thinking right now we are in the month of December, the month of Christmas, the month of joy. And yet people are going through some very difficult circumstances. They want that joy that they hear about all around them but they're not experiencing that. Can you just speak into that person's heart and encourage them on how they can find joy even in the midst of their pain? Absolutely, Anna. You know, one of the things I've discovered about the Christian life is the things that can give us the greatest joy also can give us the greatest pain. For example, our family can give us joy, but our family can also bring us great pain. And when we think about the holidays, like the Christmas holidays, these are days that generally we have associated with joy and fun. But this year, if you lost someone who's very dear to you, if you lost a, a relationship or a job, or maybe economically things are not well for you right now, this can be a really tough time because you see other people with family members and they're laughing and they're having joy and you're watching maybe a movie and it's, it's talking about the joy. And at least in the movie, the story ends up joyful and you're not experiencing that joy. Let me share just a couple of things that I think will help you. First of all, understand that joy is not based upon people or circumstances. Joy can come from our walk with the Lord. Now, granted, I believe in the scriptures that all of those people that we consider heroes of the faith, they cried. Our Lord cried when his friend Lazarus died. So if you need to have time where you just cry and pour out your heart to God, it's okay. God understands. You're not going to tell anything God he doesn't already know. 
You may even tell the Lord, Lord, I'm having a really hard day. And you know what? Our Lord will say, let me spend it with you. And he'll spend that day with you. I can't promise you that you're going to end the day with all smiles and shouting and happy. It may not end that way. It may end with tears. But as the Old Testament says to remember that even though weeping may endure for the night, joy comes in the morning. And for you, God does have something very special. And just stay close to him. Don't run from him. Stay close to him. Stay close to people you love. There are people who love you. And be around them. And you'll get through this season. And you'll come through the other side. Remember what I said a moment ago. Right now in the midst of the pain, it's hard to see. But see your purpose through the pain. And the joy will come again. May not be tomorrow, but it will come. I appreciate that so much. It's important to acknowledge the hard thing, to acknowledge that it hurts and that Jesus is with us even in that pain. He is Emmanuel, God with us, and he wants us to be close through this season. Another thing that I appreciated you talking about in your book is how it's important to let go of our past in order to move into the future that God has for us. Can you speak a little on that? Well, I find so many people who blame their lack of joy in their life and, and really a lack of purpose on what has happened in their past. And some of that pain may come from people who have hurt them, who have disappointed them. And it may have come from an experience of maybe something they had to do. And they keep blaming that for saying, I can't be happy. Well, the good news is, and you've heard this before, God can take your mess and make it a message. And he can take what was a test and turn it into a testimony. That you can turn your pain, the most painful thing in your life, you can turn it into something good if you allow God to do it. You see, the Lord uh, wants us to live in the present, not in the past. And you cannot undo one thing that happened yesterday. It's done. But today, you can say from this point forward, sure, I may have to have some counseling and some people speak into my life to help me process what happened to me. But you can turn your pain into a, to a message. And when you do, the most painful thing may turn out to be something that can be a blessing to other people and you can help them through it. So don't shy away from your past address it and deal with it, but don't let your past rob your joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, Phil. Before we let you go, can you just take a minute to pray for that person out there today who really longs to experience that joy? I would love to do that. Let's pray right now. Father, there are people who are listening right now who are having a hard day and they're hurting. But I pray today that you would help them see that you love them and you care about them. That doesn't mean that Every day has to be like a day at Disney World. It just means that you're there with us and you're gonna help us through whatever we're doing. You may not be the author of it or the cause of it. So Father, I pray today that you would help them today to feel your love and to feel that you care for them. And I pray you will bring someone into their life this holiday season who can demonstrate that love to them. For those who have lost someone, and this is a hard time of the year, I pray you will comfort their heart with memories, but also let them see that sometimes when we love, pain comes when we lose someone, but not to allow that to cause us to stop loving people. So Father, I pray for every person who's hurting that today, today, they would find themselves moving closer to you. And as a result, through the pain and through this season, they will find the joy. It may not come right away, but they'll ultimately find that joy to stop chasing happiness and start doing what you call them to do. And I'll thank you and I'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Phil, thank you so much for sharing your heart with us today. Your book is called Stop Chasing Happy. And I just pray many blessings and joy to you and your family through this Christmas season. Well, same to you. I pray you all have a wonderful Christmas. And to those who are hurting, just remember, maybe you need to find somebody today you can be a blessing to. And in return, you'll be blessed as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I love that. His final word even is look to be a blessing to others. And that is a great way to find joy, to be outward focused, because the enemy wants us to be inwardly focused on all of our pain and suffering. And yet to be a blessing brings joy. You know, there's a, there's a quote from C.S. Lewis. He says, joy is the serious business of heaven. And uh, mm -hmm. what's that mean? It means that that's what heaven is about. It's that's what they do all day long is joy. 
And that's what we, we bring as we, as we enter into the, 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 the life of Christ. We bring that life of heaven here. And I just want to speak to you. Maybe you're not experiencing that joy. You know, Phil was praying for you there. But God wants you to experience. Yes, we're going to have those times of pain. Guys, we all have them. Yeah. But, there's, but the, 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 the norm is the joy of heaven. The joy of heaven. I love that so much. You know, just as we had our conversation with Phil and we we're just talking here on the couch, God reminded me that on my refrigerator I actually have the serenity prayer. And one of the lines that always would stuck, stick out to me, I can't remember the whole thing, but I was just like, oh, why are you pointing this out to me, Jesus? But it said, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. And maybe that's you right now, that you are stuck in the middle of this hardship, you're stuck in the middle of this situation. But can I encourage you that when you accept that hardship, when you lay it all down to Jesus, see Jesus, he is the Prince of Peace. That means he has authority over peace. Peace is a person and that peace, that person is Jesus. So I just wanna encourage you today that I know what it's like to go through the middle of the night or to cry or to just be like, God, where are you? Or I don't know what's happening in my situation. But the one of the most beautiful thing is, and I just encourage you today, like even when we start our show, off today like rejoice in the Lord always rejoice in the bad times rejoice in the good times rejoice in all things because the Prince of Peace is with you his name is Jesus he's wonderful he's amazing and maybe you don't know him today this is a great day for you to accept Jesus into your life and say Jesus take me here I am I surrender my life to you because there's nothing better that you can do is just to lay your life down and to surrender to Jesus. And if that's you today, give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. The greatest gift that Jesus ever gave was his life so that we could be, you know, receive forgiveness, that we could walk in him and experience true joy that only comes from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I just, my heart really is that here on Hope Today, we don't want to over spiritualize things like we are talking about real faith with a real God that desires a real personal relationship with you. Your relationship with him doesn't have to look like mine or like Sydney's or like Tom's. Jesus loves you as you are. So today, cry out to him. Just come to him. Surrender. Be a big old mess because you know what? Jesus loves the mess and he's ready to make it beautiful. Well, that is so good. And we, we just want to say, rejoice in the Lord always. And that's today. Rejoice in the Lord. Seek God. You're going to find Him. You're going to find that joy. And you're going to find God's hope today too. Have a good one.